every scientist and I would say every person wants to know how much you can know about the world. It's one of those things that, after all, curiosity is a human thing, right? Now, if you look at the history of science, it seems to be like a triumphant ride towards knowing more about the world. And in fact, people get so excited about this that they say, the more you know about the world, the more you can know about the world, to the point that one day we'll know all there is to know. There'll be the end of knowledge. In a sense, we'll know everything that is fundamental about, in principle, about nature. I'm only talking about the physical sciences. Is that really possible? Th this dream of knowing all there is to know, to get to a final theory of nature, is extremely old. In fact, it started with philosophy itself. If you look at the first philosophers, they asked questions about nature. What is the world made of? And they would say the world is made of a substance, like a single substance. So the first philosopher in ancient Greece, Thales, would say the world is made of water. That was his unified theory of nature. He said everything comes from a single substance. That's real unification. And it turns out that this knowledge that the world could be simplified has been part of us, part of our intellectual history ever since. And it's still around. If you look at modern theories of physics, there's something called superstring theories. And the notion there, without going into a lot of detail, is that it is possible to find a single version that will describe how the fundamental components of matter, the little bits of things, interact with each other. And you could find a single explanation for all natural phenomena based on that. That is our modern dream of a final theory of nature. So you have to ask, is this really possible? And the answer, in my opinion, is that no, it is really not possible. And the way I look at that is the following. The way you learn about nature is by asking questions. And you ask questions, and you need to prove those questions right or wrong by making measurements. You need tools in order to do that. Now, the tools that we use to make measurements are limited. Every measurement has an imprecision to it. In that imprecision is what we do not know, what we do not know at that moment. And the point is that what we need to progress in science is better tools. And you'll always have room for surprises. So every time you have a new tool of discovery, you learn more about the world, but that tool doesn't cover all there is to know. There's always something more to know. I call this our island of knowledge. You know, we grow, the island grows, it's surrounded by what we do not know, but as the island of knowledge grows, the, the border also grows. That is, the border of what we do not know also grows. So if you actually look at the history of knowledge, it's actually an incomplete history. And it will always be so, because our ability, even though it's so wonderful due to human creativity, has its limits. We cannot know everything there is to know, because we can't even ask all the questions that will lead us towards complete knowledge.